Okay, so believe it or not, we have covered all of the information that we need to in chapters 8 and 9. So I will be putting up probably two problem sets, and when we come back from break, we will have a quiz on chapter 8 and 9. So this video is actually just to bring everything that we've learned together. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to look at the questions that I've posted and I'd like you to try and answer them on a separate piece of paper. And then when you've done and exhausted all possibilities, using your notes even if you have to, or the textbook, then actually play the rest of the video and check your work. So I've done this for two really um, multi-segmented problems. So here's the first problem. You're giving four species, GECL4, SECL4, ICL4- and ICL4+. They all have the same number of chlorine atoms attached to the central atom. The only thing that differs is the central atom and whether or not they have a charge. So what I would like you to do is draw the Lewis structure for each of them. Make sure that you include all valence electrons in your drawing and any lone pairs. Then, on the basis of the structures you drew, I want you to answer these following four questions. First one, what is the CL-GE-CL bond angle in the GECL4 structure? Is SECL4 polar? And explain how you've come to that conclusion. What is the hybridization of I in ICL4-? And what is the geometric shape formed by the atoms in the ICL4 plus ion? So now would be a good time to pause the video and see what you can do with this question. And then when you're done, start it, check your work, and then go ahead and look at the next question. Okay, so if you're back with me, that means that you've exhausted all possibilities. So let's look at the first drawing. We have... GeCl4. So I have to figure out how many electrons I have here. I have four on the Ge, and I have four times seven on the four chlorines. So that's a total of 32 electrons. So I'm going to, I know that this is going to be tetrahedral in shape. So 8 times 4 is 32. So as I said, we know that it is tetrahedral. And I also know that my bond angles are 109.5 degrees. And if I wanted to take it one step further and do the hybridization of GE, it would be sp1, p2, p3. So sp3 hybridized as far as the GE goes. Just doing that to get a little bit of review. Okay, so let's look at the next one. The next one is secl4. On this one, we know that the se has six electrons plus four times seven so that should make sense that it's 34 electrons. It's two more than the last one. So what this tells me right away, since I have four atoms, is that I'm going to have a lone pair. Remember that lone pair is going to cause some spreading because of the repulsive forces. So this is going to give us a seesaw shape. There's my lone pair, and then I have my CLs. 
And let's not forget our electrons. Sorry about the crowding there. So we just said that this is seesaw. And we know that the angles are going to be slightly smaller because they're pushed together. And this should be about 107 degrees. And my hybridization around the SE would be S, P1, P2, P3, and the lone pair D. So this is S, P, 3, D, as far as the S, E is concerned. All right, continuing on, trying to make a little bit of room here. We have I, C, L, 4, minus. So I have 7 on the I plus 4 times 7 on the CLs plus the negative means I gained 1. So that's 28 and 7 is 35 and 1 is a total of 36 electrons. So let's think about what that means. I have 4 CLs that are going to be coming off the I and they're each going to have 8. So 4 times 8 is 32. So before I even put pen to paper, I know that I have 4 electrons, which means I'm going to have 2 lone pairs. So I'm occupying 6 bond sites, 4 of which are actual bonds, 2 of which are lone pairs. So this is going to give me a square planar type of diagram. Here's my lone pairs. And then I have my CLs coming off my eye. One thing that we don't want to forget here is that this is an ion, so it does need brackets and charge whenever we draw an ion. We said that it was square planar. The bond angle in square planars, remember you have four coming out from the plane, all 90 degrees, then one north and south, all also 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. And our hybridization around the I is going to be S, P1, P2, P3, D, and then D2. So S, P3, D2. All right. We have one left. Let's see if I can free up some space. Alrighty. Made a little bit more space. So now we have ICL4 plus left. ICL4 plus. So I have my 7, and then I've got my 4 times 7. And this means, the plus means I lost one. So now I have 35 minus 1. I have a total of 34 electrons. Again, I know that there are four chlorines coming off the I, each with 8. So that's going to eat up 32. That means I have one lone pair. One lone pair puts me back um, with the same kind of molecular geometry as the SECL4. So I've got I... CL, 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 lone pair. My electrons. So this is seesaw again. And we already know that the angles on seesaw are 107 degrees. And since it looks exactly like the SECL4, I also know that it is SP3D. Okay, so let's go back to our questions. Um, A, we draw the structures, we have our valence electrons. All right, question one, what is the CLGECL bond angle in GECL4? Okay, so, we're, so we already answered that question um, because we put the bond angles, and it's 109.5, right? 
right there, 109.5. Next question, is SeCl4 polar? SeCl4 is definitely polar. So this is polar. Whoop. So this is polar. Why? For any of the same reasons that you learned in regions chemistry. It is asymmetrical. And there's an unequal charge distribution. I abbreviated distribution. All right, next question. What is the hybridization of I and ICL4 minus? I believe we addressed that. It was ICL4 minus. The I got taken away over here. And that is SP3D2. And what is the geometric shape formed by the atoms in ICL4 plus? We already addressed that. It was seesaw. All right, let's look at. Okay, so here's the next problem. Using the principles of atomic structure, bonding, and intermolecular forces to answer the following questions. Now I realize we're not talking about intermolecular forces yet. They come into play in the next chapter, chapter 10. So I will fill in the blanks for you as far as that's concerned right now. So first draw the Lewis structure of CS2, include all valence electrons. And then they're telling you that the carbon to sulfur bond length is 160 picometers. Is the carbon to selenium bond length in CSE2 expected to be greater than, equal to, or less than that value? Explain. Also the bond energy of the carbon to sulfur bond in CS2 is 577 kilojoules per mole. Is the bond energy of the carbon to selenium in CSE2 expected to be greater than, equal to, or less than that value? Explain. Given the two formulas of propane and methanoic acid, what are the number of sigma pi bonds in both propane and methanoic acid? What is the hybridization around each carbon in the propane and the hybridization around the O in methanoic acid? So this would be a good place to pause the video, see what you can do on your own, and then come back and check your work. Okay, so you're back. That means you've done what you could. Let's start with drawing the CS2. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the half-want rule because I know that it's a small molecule. And I know carbon and sulfur both want 8, and that would be 3 atoms at 8, which would give me a total of 24. And I know that right now, sulfur has 6, there's 2 of them, that's 12, plus 4 from the carbon is 16. So that's a difference of 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4 bonds. So being that only two things are bonded to carbon, right away I know that that has to be a double bond. I've used up half of my electrons on the double bonds, 8, and I need a total of 16. So I also know that I have two pair of lone pair on each of the sulfurs. All right. Now, in order to answer the next question, the relating to the bond lengths um, in CS2 and CSE2, I really need to draw the other molecule. So CSE2. What do I know about that? We know that Selenium and sulfur are in the same group, so they're going to have the same number of valence electrons. So therefore, it's going to look exactly the same. Let's 
So this brings me to maybe a question that we haven't quite fully covered, but certainly that we have touched upon in the past, and that has to do with electronegativity. So in this case, we know that sulfur is closer to fluorine than selenium. Therefore, it is the more electronegative atom. And therefore, it is going to pull on those electrons that it's sharing with more, I don't know, grit, so to speak. Um, therefore, that that is going to be a stronger and shorter bond. So the S, the CS2 is going to be, um, the bond length is going to be, so they're asking about the bond length and sorry, and CSE2. So the CSE2 is going to be, bond length is going to be greater, and that's because it has weaker bonds. And therefore, the bond length will be greater and weaker. So longer bond length it's not as electronegative as the um, S is. Alright, let's look at the next one, the bond energy of the carbon to sulfur bond in CS2 is 577. Is the bond energy of the carbon to selenium in, in CSE2 expected to be greater than, equal to, or less than that value? Well, we would expect that it is going to be less than that value, and the reason being is because the bonds are weaker. The bonds are weaker, then the bond energy is going to be weaker. It's a direct relationship. Okay, to continue with the next part, we naturally have to draw propane. So it says C3H8. So one, two, three. And these are all our H's. And then we have methanoic acid which is going to be C, we have a double bond O, O, H, and we have an H here. Okay, and I did make a mistake in the formula. Get rid of that C and D there, otherwise it would be ethanoic. No, the whole formula is wrong. Okay, so the formula here should be HCOOH. Not sure what formula I was using over here, but I can't even get rid of it. It's giving me a hard time. All right, so let's get back to our task at hand. We've got to check the number of electrons. Over here we have three C's times four plus eight, so that's going to give me a total of 20 electrons which I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I just didn't draw my H's. Over here, I've got 4 plus 2 times 6 plus 2. So it's a total of 18 electrons. And I've only used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's a bond in there. So we have to add some extra electrons. 10, so that's 12... 14, and then this O is going to want more electrons. There we go. And there's a bond line in between the O and the H there. So let's look at the number of sigma pi bonds in both propane and methanoic acid. So sigma pi means that I have a double bond. Remember, sigma is single, sigma pi is double, sigma pi pi is triple. So there are no sigma pi bonds in the methane. And so we're going to put for sigma, there are zero, or sigma pi, sorry. So sigma pi equals zero, 
and in this one we have one sigma pi bond on the oxygen. And then let's just look at the number of sigma bonds. So over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 sigma bonds. And then over here, we have one, two, three, four sigma bonds. Because remember, there is one in the double bond. So we have one here, one here, one here, and then one there. I just made a mess of that, but you can see them. And the hybridization around each C and the propane. So the hybridization is going to be, we have S, P1, P2, P3. So this is going to be S, P3. And then around the O, we have S, P, 2, because that double sounds, um, the double counts as a single. All right. And that is it.